Before we transition into our plenary panels and speakers this afternoon, we're going to have a really great opportunity to learn from some of the innovators that are in the ratings space. And it's my honor to tell you all that we're going to hear from three companies this afternoon uh, in our innovators, innovators Showcase. We're going to hear from Grand Rounds, Health Watch USA, and Tomy Environmental Solutions. And first, we're going to hear from Kevin Cavanaugh, who's the board chair of Health Watch USA. Well, thank you very much. Well, as she said, I'm Kevin Cavanaugh, board chairman of Health Watch USA. We're a nonprofit volunteer organization composed of patient advocates and healthcare professionals, many of whom have been injured by medical care. Our mission is to improve patient safety through healthcare transparency and the advancement of quality metrics. To accomplish this mission, we've undertaken a number of policy initiatives. We feel one of the most important is hospital mortality. We estimate that preventable mortality affects up to 200,000 patients each year who die from a preventable adverse event at hospitals. And we also feel there are too many excuses for this performance. We cannot let it become normalized. Ratings and metrics help to prevent this. An example of normalization is if an error results in a death of an elderly patient, sometimes the frail nature, advanced age of the patient is used to mitigate the error in the eyes of the family. However, in other industries, let's, for example, take the airline industry, one has to ask, are older patients or older passengers with a terminal illness who die in a crash not counted or treated any differently by the airline company because they would have died soon anyways? Well, the answer is no. And one of the things we need to do in healthcare is to disconnect medical errors, and error is an error, from the context of the patient. Another initiative which we are very concerned about is transparency of accreditation surveys. We feel these surveys contain crucial, measurable quality data. However, they're shielded in a veil of secrecy. We feel this initiative is fundamental to healthcare transparency and that support of this, of this initiative is a true test of an institution's commitment to transparency. Uh, unfortunately, these um, surveys are shielded in not only a veil of secrecy, but also in cryptic wording of the statute. And this is a portion of the statute. As you can see, it clearly mentions the American Osteopathic Association. You cannot find the Joint Commission. Uh, they're covered under the any other national crediting body phrase. And for some reason, home health agencies are exempted. The, the only thing we can figure out is that maybe their lobbyists weren't just quite as good as the others. Uh, adverse events, another very important outcome yeah, metric. Uh, we feel that full disclosure with apology and rapid compensation is key to a culture of safety and provision of high quality health care. Far too many institutions are practicing defend and deny. In the real world, if a car sideswipes another parked car, it's not acceptable for that driver to speed away without contacting the owner and telling him what happened, especially if someone is injured or killed. The same should be true in health care. Antibiotic resistant infections, another very important metric. However, lack of transparency and suboptimal reporting have inhibited our ability to both measure these infections, confront this epidemic, and rate facilities for value-based purchasing. And unlike the definition of death, even just getting facilities to agree upon what an infection is is a Herculean task. Earlier this year, HealthWatch USA uh, published in a medical journal uh, NHSN data, that's the same data on hospital compare, for MRSA bloodstream infection rates. And we found that after a very modest decrease in 2015, the rates increased. Uh, we contacted the CDC, and they stated that this was probably due to an aberration caused by changes in methodology of how they report community-acquired infections. And this brings up the concept of risk adjustment. The CDC down adjusts 
hospital infection rates if the community infection rate is high. And as a patient advocacy organization, we're against this. We think if you're a facility in a community with a high infection rate, you need to institute other protocols, such as universal pre-admission screening of patients and decolonization, rather than mathematically having your rate adjusted to the norm. You need to remember that no matter how sick a patient is, they will not develop MRSA unless they are exposed to the bacteria. And of interest, we are nowhere near on track to meeting our 2020 goal of a 50% reduction in MRSA bloodstream infections. Risk adjustment has to be used quite carefully. It can make bad care delivered to disadvantaged populations such as the poor to appear as good care. Frontline hospitals may not have the resources to implement complex quality assurance and patient safety protocols. But shouldn't we provide those resources, making sure that all citizens have access to equal and high quality care rather than normalizing suboptimal care delivered to disadvantaged populations through risk adjustment? So you need to be very careful on its use. We also feel that metrics need to be developed for identifying and tracking and reporting the carrier rate of healthcare workers. This is very important. It's an area that hasn't been touched by facilities, uh, but data indicates that the carrier rate for MRSA in healthcare workers can approach 5%. Nursing sensitive measures are extremely important. Uh, they cannot be overstressed. And value purchasing of just one of these measures would be expected to improve performance across a whole myriad of measures, and they encompass both outcome measures and structural measures. And finally, we are also very interested in medical devices. Most implanted medical devices are not preclinically tested. They're approved under a 510K approval process. Uh, we are very concerned about the risk of cobalt poisoning and brain toxicity in up to 3 million patients that have cobalt chromium containing components in their hip implants. Metrics need to be implemented that assure that hospitals are recording implanted devices, UDI numbers, into the patient's medical record, and that hospitals are reporting device events to the FDA. If we're not doing a good job on evaluating these devices pre-implantation, we at least need to do a stellar job on following these patients after they're implanted. Finally, what do you do if you get a bad result? Well, often you implement protocols that are based on evidence based medicine. Unfortunately, there is a huge research integrity problem. Bad data equates to bad policy, which equates with dead patients. Up to 50% of the research published in medical journals is not reproducible for a whole myriad of reasons. Just look at the metric for CAUTIs. If you use the ARC metric, which has a different denominator, hospitals have had stellar performance in reducing the CAUTIs. If you use the use the NHSN, CDC metric, there's only a modest decline in infection rates. So these type of discrepancies need to be cleared. So on that, let me uh, close. Thank you very much. We have resources uh, regarding this talk along with the handout at our exhibit area. Thank you very much.